In the last few years, organic and natural products have gained more appreciation and seem to be everywhere. In the beginning, organic fruit and vegetables were concentrated in specific shops, local markets, or by direct sale. However, with the increase of the consumer's interest, shelves at the supermarkets from all over the world are filling up with organic products, including a huge variety of products, not only related to food, but also fashion, perfumes, and so on. Can a revolution really start from what we put in our shopping cart? In this episode, we will investigate the statistics and the evolution of the organic retail sector. But what do we refer to when we talk about organic? This is the Organic Recipe, the podcast created by Made in Nature that explores the world of organic agriculture, discovering the stories, the research, and the people involved in this huge transformation of our habits. Rosa Maria Bertino is a journalist and has been involved in the organic and retail sectors for more than 30 years. In 1993, together with Achille Mingozzi, they founded Biobank. Since its first publication, Biobank has been able to describe the evolution of the Italian organic sector, publishing yearly records, listing organic sellers in the country, it has become a resource that collects statistics, numbers and data about retail and consumption trends. We asked her how the market has developed during her work in the field. We entered the sector when organic produce was beginning to grow in popularity. Before the European regulation, there were only very few people who believed in it. It was a time when there was much more need for information we have seen a crucial transformation. Organic produce was for a few convinced consumers and now it has become something for everyone. When we started in 1993, there were only 4,000 organic farms and 70,000 hectares in Italy. Today, the sector has grown up to 82,000 farms and almost 2 million hectares. From a commercial point of view, in the last 14 years, we have gone from 1.3 billion sales in Italy to 4.6 in 2021. The exports in 2007 went from 900 million euros to 2.9 billion euros in 2021. What has happened in Italy is a reflection of European and international trends. Organic farming and produce have continuously increased in popularity. The first country for the most organic sales in the European Union is Germany, with 12 billion euros in sales, followed by France, with 11 billion, and then Italy. In a report published in 2020, BEUC collected a large number of surveys conducted by independent organisations all over Europe, trying to define what guides European consumers in their purchases. Over half of the people interviewed have declared that sustainability is important when buying a product, such as no GMOs, no pesticides, and the importance of soil preservation. These motives have some or a lot of influence on consumers' eating habits. Two thirds of the sample also said that they were open to changing their eating habits for environmental reasons, wasting less food, buying more seasonal fruit and vegetables, and eating more plant-based foods. The great role that organic culture is playing in this green turning point has given change to the whole agri-food industry. Even if there is still some reluctance, this is already a great result for a kind of agriculture which, at the beginning, was defined as not practical. It is not a coincidence that companies that were specialized in animal products Today, they have started to diversify their businesses by buying companies or throwing themselves into the vegetable world with plant-based alternatives, natural drinks, and so on. They have understood that they cannot support a declining trend. 
The changes in consumers' choices, increasingly guided by environmental and ethical awareness, started to rapidly influence and be influenced by the market. Rosa Maria Bertino helps us to understand how the retail sector has changed in Italy during the Green Revolution. The Italian market today is worth 4.6 billion euros and has more than doubled in the last 10 years with a growth of 110%. This has happened through two main channels, large-scale distribution and specialized shops. At the beginning, the specialized channel held 53% of the organic sales, but now it accounts for just 26%. In supermarkets, the sales were at 31% and have risen to 56%, illustrating a clear change in the trend and the evolution of organic consumption. A particular change has been taken by supermarkets helping to expand the organic public opinion, but this does not mean that specialized shops have lost their role. The large-scale distribution has the possibility to create organic produce for everyone, while the specialized shops carry the flag and the message of original organic produce. Denmark has started to ease some of those restrictions. What are you doing? Yes, so to perfumare un provvedimento che possiamo sintetizzare con l'espressione Io resto a casa. Twenty twenty was a year that changed the world. During the most difficult time in the global pandemic, almost the entire world found itself closed at home to avoid the spread of the virus. People spent a lot of time in the kitchen and online, starting to cook and exchange new recipes. This new lockdown wave of home cooks created support and appreciation for organic culture. There has been a real boom and an impressive growth of organic consumption in Europe, thanks also to the investments made in technology both to promote products, finding new ways to shorten the distance between farmers and consumers, and finally thanks to the power of e-commerce. During the pandemic, e-commerce was fundamental. It involved a younger audience and it will continue to grow. It was already a significant growing trend in agriculture, but the pandemic accelerated its importance. In Italy, e-commerce was not popular, but companies and producers have used it to their advantage and have found a place to show all their products with a new kind of service. I don't think it can completely replace supermarkets or direct selling. Similarly to book and computers, both simple and technological approaches will coexist together. Just like when supermarkets were new to the market many years ago, the organic sector is finding its own way with new e-commerce strategies, reaching more and more people as an alternative and healthy approach to both eating and buying produce. Each country has a different organic culture profile. Germany is the ideological and historical heart of organic. Germany is also home to Biofac, the International Organic Fair, which is no coincidence because there has always been a larger attention to organic culture. The world goes in a certain direction, which mostly depends on politics and on basic strategic choices made in the EU and after at national and regional levels. Support is always needed to make you change. In Germany, there are shops selling regional products only. This means that when you enter a certain region, you can find and buy products only from that territory. Consequently, you are investing not only in organic produce, but in the territory. There will be greener mountains, less natural disasters, and a purer environment in return. I believe that shops have great opportunities and we need to learn more from them. You've been listening to The Organic Recipe, the podcast brought to you by Made in Nature and produced by R.P. Cercuiti, narrated by Eleanor Robinson and written by Francesco Pataccini. The sound director was Pasquale Cicciriello and the supervision was by Lorenzo Pasquinelli with the help of Silvia Lesi. Made in Nature is a project funded by the European Union and CSO Italy, the project's aim is to promote the values of organic agriculture in Italy 
France, Germany and Denmark. Discover more about the project at madeinnature.org or visit our social networks. For narrative reasons, some interviews in the podcast have been dubbed from the mother tongue of the interviewee to English with their consent. <laughs>